These two experts are the professionals who actually since 2021 silently behind the scenes were designing the defensive walls first against the lava flows in the Fegredesvio volcano in 2021. They studied the base maps and by the slope of the land and along it, they were able to actually contain that whole area of the volcanic eruption in the Fegedesville. They did it again for the Swartzengi power plant and Blue Lagoon in 2023. And for the Green W again in the last one, uh, weeks of the 2023, that wall actually worked and saved the town. Although the uh, volcanic fissure actually uh, broke through it, but we didn't end up with scenes like this, that the houses were completely buried. Uh, Iceland is grateful to them, and I think the expertise of them is amazing what they did. They were like two masters of the chess, playing against the nature. Every move the lava makes, and they have to predict it, they have to do something to counter that, and report it immediately back with the maps instructions to the contractors who have to build the design to stop the nature in that sense. When I look back at some of the videos I have about the defensive walls, I don't find anything but admiration for these two people. New defensive wall and city of Grindavik in danger. Uh, what is happening now in Iceland regarding this volcano is that the volcano is actually is not going to stop. It's actually increased this eruption rates. And what is going to happen is that now, because the volcano is at the higher ground and it has created a pool of lava in the top of ground, and some of it is flowing toward the Nataji Valley, but most of it is actually stayed there. So this is going to make a new route from the to east west side of the uh, volcano toward the road or toward the city of the Grindavik. That's a new situation. That's the reason we have built a new wall in that uh, direction to protect those cities. Uh, the city of Grindavik, which has around uh, uh, 5,000 uh, people, residents living in there. This potentially means that uh, we have in Iceland a situation like what, what the people in Pom uh, Pompeii and Herculanum had. We have to be ahead of the events, and so we're trying to build a new defensive wall to protect this town and the road if it is possible. It seems the eruption in the Blue Lagoon area of the Reckoners Peninsula of Iceland is uh, imminent. We had uh, evidence for movement and lateral movement of the magma uh, within the earth crust, five kilometers down. And as you can see here, this is the uh, interferometer image, which shows the tilt of the ground due to the uh, ma uh, bulging of the magma under the, uh, you know, the layers of the earth. As the magma rises, it will reach a surface and uh, cause exsolution. Exsolution means the uh, volatilized gases will be separated from the solid phase, and that, that creates pressure, which rises the magma to the surface. This area is very much cracked. And through every crack, the magma will uh, diffuse and then erupt, boiling upward and reaching the surface. They will erupt like a fissure eruption, like the ones that we had in the Iceland in the 18th century, 13th century, violent ones, not like the Fagel Desvio Litikoto, which was a quite tourist-friendly one. Icelandic authorities now are considering to build a defensive wall four to eight meters high and four kilometers long. And to protect this infrastructure, Blue Lagoon is a tourist attraction, a lot of investment, a lot of good name for it, and it, it needs to be protected. And also the power station, geothermal power station in that area. So uh, if it is uh, going to erupt, we need to go for, you know, protection of what we have. A defensive wall is now being built for the Blue Lagoon and is going according to the plan. And uh, there is a chance because now the Hagerfell will be the epicenter of the eruption. And we have a borehole in that direction from the geothermal power station hitting the gaseous part, the sulfur dioxide part of the magma. There is a quite likely chance that the magma will flow from the either to the north or south. 
We can protect the Grindavik if we act now by building a defensive wall. The tremors are continuing and we have several hundreds every day. The Graben is that passing the western part of the uh, Grindavik. Magmosil is under the uh, town and Hagofil also is the place that is more likely. So this is the time to build a defensive wall for Grindavik to protect the asset, the port, the houses, the investment, all that infrastructure and the emotional part of it is the house of people, the address that they call their home for life, delivery, having a boat, you know, people were born there. This can be done now. The equipment is there and it is now in the planning stage and it will start immediately probably after this video. This is looking like a science fiction. This is looking like it, as if a machinery on the moon or other planets are working. But this is Earth, planet Earth, our machinery working day and night to actually protect the environment, protecting the town, protecting humanity. When the Fegadestrial volcano in 2021 erupted, it was unprecedented. We didn't know how to stop it. We managed eventually to actually contain this volcano by building walls. One person with one digger was able actually to stop it. Despite the activity, uh, we have been working day and night, and the walls stopped it in the Natai Valley, in the Galdingaldaler Valley, and elsewhere. In the recent activity in the Swartzengi Blue Lagoon and Grindavik area, we had a similar situation probably uh, happening. We had a dry eruption in the Grindavik when nothing happened, but we had cracks and magma didn't erupt in the form of lava. But eventually we started to build the wall, defensive walls around the Blue Lagoon, around the Swartzengi, and connecting it to the hills of Thorbjorn to protect that uh, investment that we have. It's a world famous tourist attraction. And day and night we were working to protect it. And now we can confirm that the um, building of this, construction of this uh, defensive wall is finished almost. Eight meters tall it is now. It was originally designed to be three meters, but uh, using the local soil was actually a good decision. We are also expecting that the eruption be outside of this region. But if it is inside within that region, the defensive wall will just contain that within the eight meters height. Well, in that case, all the facilities will be fossilized, be trapped inside the lava, unfortunately. Icelandic governments have approved the plans to build a protective wall around the town of the Grindavik, the town that was uh, damaged by the earthquake and the subsequent volcano, put it in risk. And we know that this land around the area is actually rising. Our GPS data shows the rising of the land subsequently. And we have the earthquakes all the time happening in that area. And today the latest uh, tremors chart shows that again another phase of the uplift of the magma. This blue line is a uh, Tectonic and the uh, purple line is a magma line. That is worrying for me when I look at it. You don't see similar trends in other places. You see that earthquakes are happening, widening up the gap, and eventually uh, opening up the way for the magma to reach the surface. Grindavik may be on the way. We have to build the wall around it. The wall will have two phases. Mainly the main one will be a, to the north of it, which will be built in the remaining part of the 2023 and then 2024. And then in the spring, when the daylight is available, we finish the last part, which is toward the road to the town. And remember that this is the time that we have to work in the dark in the Iceland. Due to the subarctic winters, nights, and the town is actually suffering for more, from more cracks, and the people are practically are not live, going back there in the numbers that we expected for the new year. A few families will be there, but the major work has to start before that uh, people can return to their home. I was monitoring last night the tremors chart for the Grindavik in the Reckoness Peninsula, there was a big dip. And then early morning, just before eight o'clock, we had a rise, sharp rise. And then the land also uh, inflated, went up and then fell down. And this was the result of it. A big bang eruption happened in front of our eyes. That was just north of the 
Grindavik, it rapidly spread through the south. It was uh, at the um, watershed points of the Hagerfield toward the south with uh, mostly uh, flowing. Machinery were evacuated immediately. And one of the fissures actually sliced through the uh, defensive wall to the east side. This is the moment that it did. I'm, I'm going to show you that. This is the start of the eruption. And just like a knife cutting through the water, the fissure opened up over the wall, passed, and on the other side, we had the earth splitting and the magma in the form of lava oozing out. That was the most horrifying thing so far in this uh, eruption. And then we had wars. As the day went through and the uh, fissure cut through the dike on the other side, lava was flowing on the other side toward the south. Our colleagues trying to save the uh, 43, number 43 road started to extend the wall there because the lava was flowing from the north side of the wall toward there. We had at the same time a fissure opened up just inside the town at the boundary of the town and then houses started to burn after a while but the defensive wall is leading the lava toward the east-west direction practically it is holding up is holding other than those two fissures which are inside the wall and they are small relatively we can actually say that the wall is holding is holding and keeping it back the lava flow is now solidifying at the edge, so it's adding practically to the height. In a few spots, it has been breached, but then solidified. And again, the direction is continuing to be east-west. In that sense, the, the, the wall is working. The Green Davik defense is working.